to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What's this? <laughs> Surprise, suckers! Little bonus episode of the show. Welcome in, one and all. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We were bored. You know, we're like, hey guys, why don't we just why don't we just give the people another show right now out just of the blue? Just just an extra show. And not only that, we are uh, we're doing something unique today. We're recording a bonus episode. We've got bounce back players. We've got some NFL news to talk about. And no one saw this coming. But we actually have live questions on the show today. So uh, we're paying attention to the chat on the various live platforms. And we will be answering questions that you have uh, as they come in. The so, the, the chat is very much on uh, Jason just cannot <laughs> Keep his mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. You're welcome for everyone who clicked that bell, turned it on, and is with us right now. It's it's exciting to have the Foot Clan a part of the show here. So a live mailbag on the episode today. We have lots to talk about. Fantasy football drafts, rookie drafts coming very soon. NFL draft in less than three weeks. Uh, the excitement level, I would say it rises by – Multiple percentage points per day. Yeah, I would. I was going by the hour. Like every hour that gets closer, I get more excited, learn more about the prospects. I and- think you need to build one of those, uh, you know, like construction paper. Oh, the chain links. The chains, the paper chains, and cut cut one off every day closer to the Any draft. Any excuse to build one of those things is the. We just don't build great. them enough. Could you do it by the hour? Could you just make like every that hour? That chain gotta, would be so long. It would be glorious. You would be making that. Up until the draft. <laughs> That's true. It would take way longer to make it than it would to cut it. Well, a uh, quick reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com. If you want to be prepped up for the draft for all of the rookie breakdowns, um, we have three releases of the Dynasty Pass. That's part of the UDK+. Plus. There's one that happens before the Combine, one after the Combine. Those have been updated. And then there will be an update right after the NFL draft. A few days after, right? I mean, we kind of get it all, all the ducks in a row, Mike. That is correct. That so, is correct. Uh, I, I, dude, I'm so pumped for the for the th- this upcoming release. The draft is going to be incredible. It's going to really shake up the the rankings. At least, the, you know, not the the top three of the wide receivers, but after that, you know, the who do the Bills take? We kind of alluded to that of with the Stephon Diggs trade. That whoever the Bills take, they're going to skyrocket in value and it will be that what do you do with a wide receiver a first round wide receiver who's taken in the later 20s versus maybe someone who was taken in the teens to uh, not as an optimal situation but your evaluation of well that player's better but this situation is better so that it's always incredibly fun to break those down we brought up cincinnati and it's like okay they, they don't even have to trade t higgins to draft their next uh partner in crime with jamar chase and that what does that do to rookie picks right you have somebody probably waiting in the wings for one year of t higgins to go away and then that player can step up i mean they lost tyler boyd this off season so some big uh quarterback wide receiver combinations that could happen in the draft uh, if you're new to the show, if you're catching it live, uh, a reminder, this is the time you want to go wherever you're listening, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, make sure you click that follow button. It's going to let you know when new episodes come out. It helps the show. If you follow the uh, uh, follow the show on those platforms, and then you can leave us a review, which also helps us out. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers if you want to be alerted to any live special events. Uh, we've got a lot planned for the draft. We'll let you know about it very soon, hopefully next week. And then uh, you can follow us on X at the FF Ballers. Now, today's quick question. We're going to have some fun with it because we'll be breaking it down, but we're also going to post this live, I believe, on the, the YouTube chat, on Twitter. And then we'll go ahead and let you know what the people are saying, whether they agree with our takes. But it is a question about bounce back candidates for 2024 very important 
And um, the question is, which of these four players are going to have the biggest bounce back campaign in the 2024 season? But they are four names that are pretty interesting. (laughs) And uh, I saw a tweet from one of them this morning about the next chapter in his career. So one of the four names, Austin Eckler of the Washington Commanders. Uh, This is a player that last year, running back 23 at 11 points per game, coming off of the previous two years where he was the running back three and running back one. So Austin Eckler, uh, Josh Jacobs, moving to the Packers. He's got a good situation. Was also one of the least explosive players in the NFL last year. Ended at RB18. Looked pretty downhill in his career. He looked like Mike prophesied. In off season where he didn't hey, work out, and then it did, it's like you don't work out, you don't work out. That's the that's oh, that's the truth. I see. I see what you know, you it's because let's be honest. How easy is it to not work out? Oh, Super I can, I can, easy. I do it all the time. Yeah, I'm like I I'm, am. I'm, I'm so good at it. Pro level not work outer. I don't, I don't it, do the walking or pretty uh, the exercise for our show. Don't work out. Does work out. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's like more time the, behind the spreadsheets. That's we right. Get a mental sweat. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> you got me. You got your gains <laughs> in the in the algorithms. That's right. Yeah. What uh, is what does bulk season look like? Bulk season is just more another sheets. tab, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you're one of the psychos who has, uh, you're like Al Boyle. How many tabs you got open right now, Al? Uh, oh, that's scary. There's 92 in this one. Come oh on, my God, what are you doing? But I, but I have two browser windows. You can- there's 48 in the other. <laughs> It's it's so that's you, absolute insanity. You can't possibly tell what's what happening in any tab. You can't see what any tab is. You're a monster. So you have like uh, uh, almost 140 tabs open. Yeah, that's right. That's Paul, not. That's what a, are you doing? That's not. You can't exist in that world. No. This is that's the equivalent of the. T, they should do a TLC hoarder show on tab <laughs> users. Like you, that's a house that does not function. If you accidentally close a window, owl. Do you freak out and immediately do like the reopen with every tab that I had? I there's no doubt yeah, he does. There's no back doubt he does. he does. I do. I do. <laughs> there's I don't no want to lose anything. There's no way you can find your eighth tab <laughs> you, open and you've be like already lost everything. Yeah. When you when you have created the haystack, you have to find the needle. Listen, yeah. you do you. I'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Austin Eckler, bounce back candidate. Josh Jacobs, bounce back candidate. And then let's move on to. Another player that will be hotly debated all offseason long, Cooper Cup, who had back-to-back wide receiver one seasons in points per game and ended up at 26 with an injury-riddled campaign last year. The headlines went to Puka Nakua in the offense, Kyron Williams in the offense. Cooper Cup just kind of got lost, and, and I don't know how much – you know how often he was playing hurt. I know that was a, a part what, of the season, but this was, was wide the, receiver twenty six in points per game. What was the opening, uh, the preseason injury? Was it a sprained ankle? Yeah, that I, happened right before drafts. Yeah, but where he he did miss the first four weeks, and you know he was coming off the injury. The first two games were actually sensational off of that, but it that's at least something to keep in mind. Yeah, it, when, not that the guy doesn't seem to get injured all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, he spent the last two previous years uh, finishing as the wide receiver one yeah. in, in points per game. I've got some good data on Cooper Cup when we come back to him. What's the final name, Andy? Well, uh, by the way, Cooper Cup almost 31 years old as well. That'll be factored in. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert of the Los Angeles Chargers, who Mike, uh, before the show, exasperately, exasperately. No, no that's, that's not, a, right. that's not a word. Wait, wait, wait. Don't. No, don't no, tell no, him. Don't oh. bail it out. Try it uh, again. Before the show, Mike, no, no, no. Mike Trust. said, okay. "How do you say it?" No, I don't think the word I was saying is a real word. You can't say exasperatedly. Oh yeah, you can. I just did it. Yeah, there. Yeah, you. I just but did is it. that a real word? No, I mean, it's, it's no. real now. I said disgruntily on the last show. That's mm. not a word either. Mm. I try to add an ly to just about anything. Uh, Justin Herbert, Mike, before the show commented that he was the quarterback. 14th. It looks like a real and word to me. Exasperatedly? Exasperatedly. In an you bet he did. extremely annoyed way, especially because you cannot do anything to improve a situation. Yes. yes. Where, would and you say that you said it exasperatedly? Uh, I don't know that I was annoyed. I was more shocked. Okay. That because Shockedly. Shockedly. Sh- shockedly. <laughs> that he 
is the QB 14. That's his ADP right now in best ball. Justin Herbert, the the next big quarterback as of just a few years ago, not even being drafted as a one so right now. What's fun is we we have those four names: Eckler, Jacobs, Cup, Herbert. We'll break it down. We'll give our picks. But I've I'm watching a poll live. Oh, is it already up? It's ha- well in the in the YouTube chat. Uh, every single vote it just moves uh, immediately. So like right now, immediately into the vote, Josh Jacobs is at fifty four percent, Cooper Cups at twenty six percent, Herbert at seventeen, and Eckler. The belief is yeah. proportional to the pain. It's at five percent, which is the amount of people that were happy with anything he did last year. Yeah, I, th- so my big question, what I wanted to know coming into this show wasn't even our picks, and it wasn't even who the Foot Clan thought was going to bounce back the most. The only thing I wanted to know was how low is the percentage going to be on Austin Eckler? And this well, was lower than I thought. Sway the vote. See if you can make a move. I don't know what your opinion is on these four names. Um, f- so here's the name that I was really interested in, did a bunch of research on. Cooper Cup was the name I was curious about. He's been awesome. He he was injured last year. He played some games without Cooper Cup last year. So it was like I remember him or without Matthew Stafford. <laughs> he did play several games without himself. That's yeah. that's true. He missed <laughs> he missed a handful of games. Um, but I wanted to know just the truth. I genuinely was like, did he have a really bad season? Did he have a really good season? What's the actual legitimate truth? He had ten games last season total where he played ninety five percent of snaps or more. I'm taking out. Um, games that Matthew Stafford did not play, and I'm taking out games that uh, Cooper Cup was injured in and didn't really. So how many? How many did he play with Stafford at 95 percent? With Stafford at 95 was 10 full. That's games. a lot of games. That's that's the majority of the season, and his 17 game pace over those 10 games specifically would be yeah 147 targets for 95 receptions, 1152 yards, and eight and a half touchdowns. That's not bad. That is not. That's not wide receiver one. That is not a wide receiver one, let alone the wide receiver one. In fact, that is twelve point seven half PPR points per game. That would have basically been identical to what Amari Cooper did last year as the wide receiver sixteen in, in points per game. So, the, given the age, the rise of Puka Nakua, and the obvious downturn in production I don't think Cooper Cup is irrelevant I've drafted him plenty in like the fourth round when he's there in best ball um but he's certainly done being the I don't think there's a bounce back to where he goes to 2022 Cooper Cup levels let let me ask you a, a slightly different question what are the odds then if he's not your is he not your pick of these four I think based on – after I did that research, if I said who has the chance to bounce back, my, my pick would probably be Josh Jacobs. That's my pick as well. But my, my kind of sideways question on, on Cooper Cup isn't can he be the wide receiver one again. It's what percentage chance do you have with a healthy Cooper Cup that he is the better pick between him and Puka Nakua? Zero. Oh, you, well, Whoa. you're, you're – wait, 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 wait. Zero? No, no, no. Uh, you're factoring in where you're drafting them as well, right? Because uh, then l- certainly – Both, both. How about where he's factored in but also the ability to put up more total fantasy points If they were both the same cost, there's no chance Cooper Cup outproduces Puka Nakua in my so that, opinion. In that way, so you're saying statistically you see no chance for Cooper Cup to have better stats. Right. That's what I would okay, say. Okay, Mike, I do you have it at 0% chance? No. No, I wouldn't give zero – Cooper Cup has been all pro. He's Super been Bowl. a fantastic yeah. player. He uh, last year, when actually healthy, had some great games as well. You know the the first two back wide receiver twelve, wide receiver three, then kind of has a down tick, and then has another three game stretch wide receiver twenty one five and four. So the I think that the greatness is still there for Cooper Cup. So I would not say it's as at even cost, it's a zero percent chance for for Cup versus Puka. I would I would lean Puka Nakua just be, because of the the him being uh, Cooper Cup playing at thirty one this year is wild. It, it does not feel like he has been in the league long enough to be thirty one, which he came in as an older prospect. I'd put the percentage chance for. Cooper Cup to have the better season than Puka, I'd put it at, let's go like 35-ish, 35 to 40. Okay, so that, I mean, that's pretty high compared to zero. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, infinitely. Jacobs higher. is the pick to me, and it's it's pretty it's pretty simple because Josh Jacobs is at an age where you're still a prime running back, and so I think he's 26 years old. He, he's, he's on that edge. He's been given the opportunity on a good team in a good offense with a terrible depth chart. With a terrible depth chart. How dare you? Well, no, this is the same as um, <laughs> this is like still standing up for the villain. No, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you. It's identical to, to, to what happened in Kansas City. They Both Kansas City and Green Bay said, Meh, we'll just bring Clyde and A.J. Dillon back to be nobodies. So that makes Pacheco and Josh Jacobs the guy. And so, you know, what's the real floor for Josh Jacobs? In a healthy season, I think he's an RB12 floor I in think Green Bay. He's going to see so much volume. And targets. He'll see a lot he, of targets. Everything. I mean, the you – the way that that the the Green Bay Packers talk about specifically Coach uh, Lafleur talking ab about Aaron Jones, like I don't know if you guys saw the, a, a video recently came out and it was I don't know the age of it so maybe maybe it come out earlier but it was talking about like what is kind of like who's that dude? No, that was very it. recent. Yeah, and it was it was Aaron Jones. Like they, the team loved him, the coaching staff, and I, I mean clearly the the GM did not like the whatever the money situation was. So for them to move away from Aaron Jones, I think is such a, a large move. Uh, just everything like, you know, emotionally for this team the, to bring Jacobs in. Like I, the Raiders didn't want to lose be the guy. They didn't want to lose Jacobs and the Packers didn't want to lose Jones. That's the, that's the interesting thing about the off season. Cause you can say, well, they went out and got the guy, but then, you know, like, if you listen to the head coach of the, the Raiders, they're like, that hurt, losing Jacobs. Like, we wanted him here. Can't believe we lost him. And then the similar thing happens with Jones. And there was a cool quote recently from LaFleur talking specifically about Josh Jacobs and what they saw in him and why they grabbed him. And the, for fantasy football purposes, what was so great about it is he said that he could be used a lot more in the passing game, that he's got the, the options to do some really good stuff. Like, he sees on tape – some really good stuff that was underutilized in the past. Was so he, that's well, like – he's actually coming out saying, hey, guys, we're going to throw the ball to him in better ways than the Raiders did, and that's just great for fantasy. A, a pass, a target is worth so much more than a carry. Uh, by the way, I, I, I'm reading the live chat, and somebody said Andy has Josh Jacobs in Dynasty. That must be why I'm saying that. I do not. He traded him away. I do not have Josh Jacobs. I just think of these candidates like I don't have hope for Eckler. Who does? I, who does? Uh, oh, who has Josh oh, Jacobs okay. in fantasy? Okay. Come on, I'll <laughs> really? chime in with the really? Jacobs flex. Go Pat, go. Is it the guy that has the number one pick? Um, I, I will say this: if the if if this was reversed and it was who, what are the percentage chances of any of these guys busting? Just just being done. D U N washed. I could see it happening easily for Eckler. I don't see it happening for Cooper Cup. Despite me saying right. like zero percent chance that he is you know, on a, on a per game basis, more valuable than Puka. Cause I think Puka has taken that role over. Um, Josh Jacobs, I see a, a route that he could be done. Like he, his, his, oh, efficiency, his efficiency was so bad this last year yeah. that if it continues to get worse and they've got AJ Dillon and then they time share it and he's not what Aaron Jones was and he's just bad. This is basically a one year deal. If he's bad, the way gotcha. the contract is set. Yeah. Up. I mean, he was very bad last year and you can make excuses for him with quarterbacks and head coaching changes and the off season, or you can just take it at face value and say, look, there's a risk there. Uh, we need to take a quick break and then I'm going to come back and talk about where these poll results are and get your final answers. All right, um, which player will have the biggest bounce back in 2024? Uh, it's staying pretty much the same right now. Herbert's at 15%, Cups at 30 Jacobs at 49%, and then Austin Eckler at 6%. I do want to talk about Justin Herbert for a second. I think there are two situations right now in fantasy football where the pendulum is swinging too far, and I'm really – I'm going to bring one up. Obviously, it's Justin Herbert where I think – you know, Diggs leaves the Bills and nobody cares about how it impacts Josh Allen. The Bills became a run first team and nobody cares because we have a few games of him being fine in a run first team. 
we need to give more credit, I think, to Justin Herbert. Um, this is one of the top arm talents in football, evasive in the pocket, can run the football for two or 300 yards, might do it more with this new offense. We don't like the current way. We can't, we can't draw the map right now in our heads of how Justin Herbert's season goes well. And so because of that, I think the pendulum has swung too far just because we can't say, okay, you know, we don't like huge and Josh Palmer's not a one and they like to run the football. I think Justin Herbert is a very, very good quarterback. And so I think that pendulum might have swung too far. And I'll, But how, how far? Because he's being drafted as the wide receiver 14 in basketball. What is – What's the ceiling case? I think the ceiling case for Justin Herbert is top seven. Okay. So it's not that I think he will get there. It's just that's where I think the pendulum has swung too far. I think people have discounted the possibility that Justin Herbert is still a top five, top six quarterback in production. I still think that could happen. He could be efficient enough. He could throw 35 touchdowns. He could run the ball enough where that happens. I'm not saying it will, but I do want to bring up real quick I do think the pendulum swung too far on Drake London. Oh, oh. oh. look in oh. the mirror. I am, Man, yeah, you take I, responsibility. I'm, I no longer believe that Drake London will factor into anything I do this uh, this season because the pendulum is swinging too far. He is the new hotness. Everyone's excited yeah. about the potential. If you went and broke down, everybody not named Justin Jefferson that's been associated with Kirk Cousins historically, they're his ones, it doesn't look good, guys. He had the best season he ever was had from a one. Pierre Garçon? Yeah. Did but, he have Garçon? Yeah, he did, but it was he was always double digits or well beyond in fantasy finish with Kirk Cousins. The best finish with Kirk Cousins, I believe, was Adam Thielen. One time was wide receiver seven. Mm. Otherwise, it's all been double digits. So I'm just I'm just saying, like, if he's priced at something that has been only done by Justin Jefferson, you might be in trouble. Uh so Yeah, that just comes down to, you know, what is Drake oh, London? Is Drake London a you know, he's one, not Jefferson. Is he a top 10 NFL wide receiver or is he not? And and right now we have guesses, you know, hypothesis, but we're going to find out this year. You're just saying that I just think you that put your percentage odds of him being that not as high as the his people. Dr do. His draft cost has gone so wild that I'm now going to work actively to lower it. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. But anyways, back to uh, these four. My final answer was Jacobs. Jason said Jacobs. Mike, why don't you put a bow on it? Give us your name. Because it says biggest bounce back, that is the the technical language of the question, I will say Cooper Cup. Because Josh Jacobs, in points per game, was the running back 18. Being drafted as the 9, it's not, I don't think, as a, a large of a jump. So it's still, he still helped people last year, whereas Cooper Cup actively didn't. So uh, the, the bounce back is larger. Cup, Cup hurt people because it was just so <clears throat> excuse me, so hot, so cold. And, and the missed games. I mean, that's, yes, as someone yes. who had Cooper Cup a lot of places, what really hurt was just starting the season without him for so long that it was like, oh, this this is, yeah. you know, my season's off to a terrible start. Yeah, and, and, and to prove my point here, I'm looking at the live chat because we're going to be doing some live mailbag on the show today. And it's, uh, you know, London top five wide receiver. So, you know, that that's the kind of... Uh, hey, people are pumped. Let them be pumped. And also, uh, Andy's losing his mind <laughs> because I said something <laughs> negative. I'm telling you. I'm telling I, you. It, it, you, can't, you can't take a player at a position that it's like your percentage chance is going to be very, very low that he hits. I'd rather take some other players. Like, um, I don't know, bounce back candidates Garrett Wilson and Jalen Waddell at reduced costs, right? Yeah. Well, Fantasy is not about drafting guys and then hoping that they perform up to that level. When you're Yeah, when you're drafting at – where Drake London is going is your your margin for error is very small. We are getting some updated news that we should discuss briefly, just that there are some additions to the Rashi Rice case. Well, don't we have the news drop? Yeah, let's get into it. Oh, yeah. News and notes from around the league. Show goes live and guy Man, forgets how to host. Thank you, Mike. What's going on over here? I, I need those drops. Okay. Well, I mean, you you did post it. You posted it in the Slack. It's not in the show doc. We found out that Rashi That's Rice. That's not my job. We found out that Rashi Rice was driving the Lamborghini that was involved in the pileup. Yeah. Um, and then you post. Did you post the update moments ago? Yeah. Well, yeah. It is. It is now breaking on Twitter 
that there was uh, 10.8 grams of marijuana found in the Lamborghini that Rasheed Rice was driving, which uh, the, the reports I'm looking at, that is considered a uh, felony, a state jail felony amount in Texas. He also fled the scene. Yeah. He's He says he's, contri- uh, he's uh, cooperating now. I'm actually a little bit surprised that we haven't heard more from authorities uh, in specificity about what charges may arise so that we can extrapolate the impact to his availability. But I would say that, you know, Dynasty Leagues, we haven't thrown a lot of shade on the situation because we believe long term he'll be okay. But in a redraft format, yeah, I mean, the, do you start to like? Do, do you get a glimmer in your eye for Hollywood Brown all of a sudden, or it, it also Pacheco and it, th- this news coming out right now? Being even, even just the fear of okay, the Chiefs could lose, um, you know, half a season. Maybe they lose eight games this season from Rice. Then we're a couple weeks out from the draft. This is another one of those situations that could make them use their first round pick on. Oh no, another McCall Hardman. <laughs> maybe a McCall Hardman if they want to grab out an I Mitchell or they could grab <laughs> Troy Franklin or uh, Xavier Worthy have a, have a really have a really good draft pick. So th- they'll be <laughs> <laughs> tried to sneak that one in. Yeah. Um, there Dallas police, uh, there will be charges. So we'll just have to wait and monitor and, and discuss that as they come. Uh, let's get back to that digs situation right the trade yep because we had an update and the texans removed the final three years of stefan Diggs' contract in the transaction making him eligible for free agency after this year and they moved some money around so that he will make more this year yeah all the guaranteed money that he was owed in futures they just gave it to him now said hey play your best you're this gonna be a free the, agent this and is I, a great move for houston you, you think so so that's I, what i'm I, i'm there was a little bit of question mark at the oh, end of that oh, okay <laughs> all right uh, so I think that the trade to get Stephon Diggs is a great move for Houston. They they don't carry a lot of risk. They had the money to spend this year. He's not a long term prospect. If he comes over and he stinks, whatever. Now that the, they've canceled the contract beyond here, they they don't worry about it. If he comes out and balls out and he's a free agent, he's going to go get the bag wherever he wants. Um, at first, I thought, oh, this would be great. You get a third round compensatory pick, and you basically gave up less than a second to get right. him so it's almost like a free rental but he's a 10-year vet so the the best they could get in a compensatory f- pick would be a fifth round pick right uh, so i i mean it's it's good for stroud it's good for the texans in being better as a football team this year but specifically canceling the contract i don't know i, I think the things you do to just like motivate players is like if you have to do this to motivate them it probably won't work. If you don't have to do that to motivate them, then it's irrelevant. I think it's a good one-year move for them. I mean, the second they lost Tank Dell last year, you saw the change in the way the offense functioned. Like, Nico Collins and Dalton Schultz wasn't going to be enough for them to make a playoff run. So, at least you add depth in that regard. I'm on the camp that you guys are where, like, Nico Collins is the biggest worry to me. He's an outside wide receiver. He unquestionably will give up targets to Stephon Diggs. That has to happen, whereas Tank Dell – Younger certainly has a, um, uh, you know, a connection with with Stroud and plays from the slot oftentimes. And so I think his role is more secure. Yeah, I, it's I going to be had, fun to watch. Prior to Diggs coming over, I had Tank Dell ahead of Nico Collins in my startup ranking. So this season, I expected it to be better. Then you add in the fact that the kind of position that you expect Diggs to play impacts Nico more. But I, well, I, I do think- have the glimmer of all of you remember the huge games where where. Noah Brown just exploded because right. it's like people are focused on these other two good wide receivers. It's like that third guy gets loose behind. Well, now maybe if if Nico Collins is playing the Noah Brown role, it's like bomb city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it could go bounce back candidate wise to Fon Diggs. Maybe. I'll, um, what I'll throw that, out though that's going to be a hard one to predict. Uh, it would, my couple thoughts are the. Nico versus Stephon Diggs this year will be fascinating because if if Stephon Diggs still has it, he'll get the extension. If Nico Collins is a better player than Stephon Diggs this year, then I would put my money that Nico Collins gets the extension and and Stephon Diggs goes to free agency. The I'd be shocked if Diggs went back to Houston no matter what. Like, yeah, I, I put my odds at like five percent. But the the question for you guys though of like 
you know, before Diggs was there, I don't mind. You want you have Tank Dell ahead of Nico. That's fine. the The larger question will come with how do the Texans manage their personnel because they were, uh, if I'm remembering it correctly off the top of my head, they were not like a huge eleven personnel team where you have the three wide receivers on the team or, or on the field at the same time. So when there are two wide receivers on the field, to me, it will be Stephon Diggs and Nico it Collins. It will. It will. So like you're, that doesn't that doesn't make Tank Dell go away. But you just now if you, the more snaps that Tank Dell doesn't even have an opportunity to get a target, like that it it matters. You, you, I I agree completely with both of you. The only caveat being that. You would imagine now that you add Stephon Diggs, you're going to be in, in that's, three that's wide receiver sets a lot more. Your personnel has three great wide receivers. You're probably running out. Yeah, of and you trust more. Stroud more than you did last year. Maybe in the in the twelve personnel protection set. We'll see. So I mean, it's it is it it is an offensive philosophy though. Of you feel like well, no, I want we want to have greater protection for Stroud. And just I'm have really two excited wideouts. to watch Houston play football. Yes, and. Um, Former Houston quarterback Deshaun Watson, the last piece of news to discuss, maybe not discuss, just say out loud, it was a little bit interesting that he said he'd be ready for week one. Like, that seemed like it should have been a foregone conclusion. Yeah, the expectation, uh, when, when I saw this news, I pulled up the ultimate draft kit, looked at our injury report that Betts puts together, and the expectation that he should be fine by training camp. And that's a long time before week one. That's, you know, training camp, then preseason, then you, you're going. And so, yeah, it was like, don't say that. Yeah, I, I don't just know. Feels, is he saying that he's going to remember how to play quarterback by week one? Okay. Oh, he'll be ready, like, yeah. mentally. Like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember. I'm going to get knew, it. I, I was knew, good at one time. I knew there was danger in bringing up this <laughs> kind of non-news news. And I don't know if I was, like, I secretly wanted all those comments or not. But um, we are going to jump into a live mailbag. We don't have any more news to talk about. So you can submit your questions wherever you are watching. If you're watching live, we're going to answer them. Um, if you're not watching live or if you're listening on the podcast app, you can just enjoy the debates on these issues. So uh, let's do it. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, it's live. <laughs> All right, um, you know it wouldn't be a live mailbag if you didn't take your first question from someone named Poopy Butt. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wrote this. In, uh, this is my question. Yeah, Poopy Butt uh, says, <laughs> "Is Saquon a top five pick?" And um, what do you think? A top five pick. I mean, we again, we we don't have our full uh, projected. Uh, well, we're getting into there. them yeah, we're, real we're, soon. We are very close. Ranking. But so, I mean, off the top of my head. CMC. Would, yeah. Uh, so, Tyreek Hill. Yep. C.D. Lamb. Yeah. For the top five? For the top yeah. five. Jamar. I, I could see a debate between between a top running back we're, though, we're, and C.D. But. Okay, let, 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 let's just look at running backs first. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because he that. might not be in the top five Jonathan running backs. Jonathan Taylor or Saquon. I think I lean Saquon. I lean. I that's lean, really close. I, I lean, lean Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor. Taylor. Christian McCaffrey's obviously in. Yeah, above McCaffrey's him. above him. Brees. Yeah. Give me Brees. Above him. Bijan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kyron. Mm, uh, that's man. the edge for me, man. For for me, I'm Kyron. Jameer Gibbs. I'll take Saquon. So Saquon's a round running. Yeah, back he's five. a round running back. You five. add so in he's not a, top a five couple fan. of wide receivers, and yeah, he's not. Okay. Uh, I do think that the, the, this is a very exciting season for Saquon. You know, which we haven't. It is. We've Having just been to see him on a good offense. Like that's awesome. Getting the, yeah, getting that opportunity seems like it'd be fun. Uh, all right. Uh, well, do we have the Gus bus drop here? Can we get can, there? It is. Mike. Mike says, "Is Gus Edwards more valuable than Cortland Sutton in a dynasty league?" Yes. Oh. Yes. This is where I'm at. Mike oh. says. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he is. I, what? I, I don't hate the question. Gus Edwards, I think we were talking about him on the footcast of he is fascinating because everyone, the entire world expects the Los Angeles Chargers to spend a higher draft capital pick on a running back. But what if they don't? What if they take their first running back in the fourth round? And now it is a proven veteran with – in OC, who likes him, 
I, on a team that is high T and run first. I don't like, care if they draft the running back. I think Gus because Edwards even will be, if it's Blake will be the goal line. I guy. think Gus Edwards will be relevant for fantasy this year, no matter who they take. Because think about the possible outcomes for drafting a like a a running back. Like they're one of the higher, um, like the third is the earliest I see for them. Because they are drafting very high in the first and second round. And I don't think that's where running backs belong. I don't think they're going to force that when they're trying to build an offensive line and uh, they spent the money on Gus Edwards. So I think worst case scenario is you get a third round pick at a running back and maybe you don't. And if you do, it's a rookie that doesn't have the trust of Greg Roman, that doesn't have the pedigree that put up 13 touchdowns in the top offense last year. I think Gus Edwards is very valuable this year I, I will say that in defense of what you're saying if they were to grab Blake Corum who was Michigan's running back with Harbaugh right who scored 27 touchdowns and they take him as the first running back off the board you can go back to last year at Michigan and see that Blake Corum was was very very good relevant could be the first running back drafted but he was in a timeshare somehow still um for Michigan and they used another back a lot so you could very easily have Blake Corum come in as the number one back and still have Gus Edwards involved in a in a system like this. So I, I don't discount that, but he's a running back. He's older. I do think he's going to be supplanted on the depth chart. And you've got Cortland Sutton, who... Who's throwing Cor him the ball, though, Jay? It wouldn't, uh, well, the NFL draft's going to change a lot. I mean, it might be a How rookie coming in. How many receiving yards did Cortland Sutton have last year? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? About I'm as guessing many as 750. <laughs> as many, Jason, had, Jason is a legendary guesser for everybody out there. Uh, 772. He had 59 okay. catches. How many touchdowns? He had 10 touchdowns. But Double that, digits. That's, that's Double the, digit touchdowns. He had 10 touchdowns, and he finished at wide receiver 35. Where's Jerry Judy? Jerry, Not on the roster. Jerry Judy wasn't on <laughs> the gone. roster all last year. <laughs> what is, he was just running around voice? on the sideline. You're doing a Cortland Sutton brag session. This dude's like been 181, 46, 43, and 35. Give me the guy that makes a difference on my team, not the guy that I might regret starting. I will say that it is a comically <laughs> fair debate between Gus Edwards and Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton That's, okay. right. is going to turn 30 by the time that a quarterback will be stepping up into relevance for the Broncos. It would is is the most likely outcome. So We might need to get a louder bus horn if he delivers as the number one in uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Yeah, that that sound. Give me, give me the sound yeah, again, because that sound. That's backup running back sound. Well, he that's, is. That's, that's compliment running back. Okay. He's not. He he can make a difference. Oh, uh, when, <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> who's better? Who's better, Zamir White or Gus Edwards? Zamir White. No, he's not. I'm oh, saying for fantasy. A, I'm not no, saying, I, I'm as, saying a as a running, running back. back. Who's better, Alexander Madison or Gus Edwards? Gus Edwards. Yeah, as a running yeah. back. As a running back. And also, last year, we were sitting here going, like, just because they have the job, they're the guy. Madison was the starter last year, right? I mean, there's a handful of guys that are just the default starter. Miles Sanders was the starter last year. I just – I'm going to just be slightly on the more bullish Gus side. Okay. You're allowed to have – Because they believe in him. They just like the cut of his jib. Well, I mean, and, and he they, was signed they've worked really with them. Fast, he right? was signed really fast. He was with Greg Roman in Baltimore yeah. when they used him as a touchdown machine. So it, it, he's coming over, knows the system. They, he will have goal line opportunities. He's for better sure. than Christian McCaffrey is what I'm saying. I That's what, <laughs> Did that's you hear what me? the people you are hear hearing. What I'm saying? That is, wait, who is? Say that sentence. I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gus Edwards is obviously, clearly, this is a real take, so much better at playing running back than – uh, Zamir White. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I was ready to cut it up. I was ready to cut it out. Uh, all right. Let's move on here. Uh, we got a question in the chat from Colton uh, who says, is Christian Kirk a buy or a sell? I, I, I've so asked this question to myself, and I don't. I, I know wondering. my answer for sure, and I think he's a buy. I really do. Um, he's not someone that you need to go buy high on, but – I, f I feel like right now he's undervalued. Like, I've drafted a lot of Christian Kirk in best balls right now. So, uh, when I look at is someone a buy or someone a sell, it's essentially saying, are they more valuable, do you believe, than where their average draft value is or less valuable? And I think right now he's being undervalued. He is a very good player. 
his opportunities, um, you know, with, with Calvin Ridley being gone, uh, will go up even if they bring in a rookie. This is a guy who two years ago was a wide receiver one. He was the wide receiver 11 in fantasy football. So it's not like he, his ceiling isn't to be able to be really good for fantasy. You like him more than the fantasy opportunity for Gabe Davis? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that that tells you, like, if, if Calvin Ridley had re-signed there, you'd be drafting Ridley over Kirk. Correct. But because Gabe Davis signed there and they've, they've said all the flowery things, like Gabe's going to let us do all these amazing things as the pretend Calvin Ridley we signed. But we all, I think we all look at Kirk and say, oh, interesting. Or Zay Jones, interesting, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I think Kirk is, is – and the fact that they went out and got Gabe Davis says they might not – invest in some rookie wide receiver that's going to come in and impact Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's their one. <laughs> and what's going on? Gabe Davis Chuckles. great blocker, so Sorry. good news for Travis. Sorry, I'm, I'm following the chat, and I'm going to have to throw over to the Deuce, Deucer's Alley camera here. But so, somebody said, where's Walmart Bo Borgononi? Is he fired yet? And I think the referent... <laughs> To our <laughs> new guy, Walmart Borgnoni. Walmart, Walmart Borgnoni. Oh. Get wrecked. <laughs> yes. So that's Matt sitting over there in Deucer's Alley helping us out. The uh, Falcon. Yeah, we call him the Falcon. He's, <laughs> he's new to the team. But uh, if you want to call him Walmart Borgnoni, you can. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. Josh uh, was very displeased by what that. What a compliment. To, I, the only problem I have is what a compliment it is to, to Walmart. Kyle. To Kyle. Because it's like. I don't think Matt's a bad looking dude. Right. And so it's like, I wait, it's but you're the, the Walmart version. I thought it's of more the role. I didn't think it was a visual <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was going visual. Yeah, I thought it was visual. Oh, I mean, glasses it's kind of beard. Yeah, it's got, it's got that All right. Well, uh, congratulations, Matt, for those <laughs> few moments here. Um, get bodied Walmart. Somebody said. <laughs> get bodied oh, Walmart. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, dollar store, Kyle. Oh. Yeah, no, thanks. Very um, nice. Deucer's Alley, you never know what to expect over no. there. No, nope. Uh, Good work. There's new faces all the time. Uh, Timothy did want to know if he can get the <laughs> oh my gosh the UDK Stop song. The, yes, you can get the UDK song because it's great. <laughs> Stop asking for this. Only four more seconds, Mike. <laughs> now, are you are you kind of opposed to that song just because you weren't the one that actually made it? No, and you make so much of the show that you kind of feel like your glory is being stolen. No, not not at all. Like I, that I song was made by Walmart, Mike. I right? En I enjoyed it <laughs> very much. It's just it, no. Hey, if the people want it, I guess can't the people stop want the greatness. It. That's what uh, that's what I'm seeing. I've here. just I've moved on. All right, let's take another quick break and answer some more questions. All right. Um, Llama Two-Face would like everybody out there to know that if, if they win the Powerball, because I know, did anybody win the big the big billion? Oh, is it is it up right now? I think they won the money, but um, I guess in the future, if Llama wins Powerball, he's going to throw a massive Foot Clan party at Llama's house. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Kent to wants to know, keeper-wise, would you go with JSN or would you go with Zay Flowers? I think that is a good question. It is. So good that Jason is struggling immediately. Yeah, I exhaled. I, I, I don't like the question. I It's Zay Flowers for it me. It is Zay Flowers, but I don't want it to be Zay Flowers. I and understand that's why that. the exhale, because it should be JSN. It should. This feels like saying, like, correct me if I'm wrong, this feels like saying like an old school question of like, who's a better keeper? Is it is it Jarvis Landry in his heyday? Or is it like a great outside wide receiver in his heyday? Because I think I think we would all say, like, doesn't JSN have a higher ceiling? In a career. In a career-wise? Yes, like yes. But I think like it still might be two years before he gets to be the one. So have, have you seen the comments regarding the offensive philosophy in, in Baltimore and how it's going to change? No. So last year, so two years ago, Greg Roman, all those years, it was uh -huh. run, 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 run. And then last year, Todd Monken, they changed, the, obviously, a very competitive season. Oh, that they want to run the ball more this year? Yeah, and, and we were disappointed in the yardage numbers for Lamar last year under the Todd Monken excitement levels. Andrew's going down, Zay Flowers here, there, sometimes not, sometimes he is. But they, they have talked about offensively, like, we're going – they brought in Derrick Henry, and we're going to run the football more. Now, it's not going to go to Greg Roman days, but I do think you may have a slight balancing that happens. And that does concern me a little bit for, like, Zay Flowers benefited from no Mark Andrews and the first year of Todd Munkin's situation. 
Like over or under six touchdowns for Zay Flowers. Ooh, that's a good that's line. That's a great line. Um, we just did this whole Cortland Sutton experiment with, like, you know, yardage and, and wide receiver numbers. And, like, is Zay Flowers over or under wide receiver 26? No, it's a – I'll take a better finish than 26. I, th- I, I take the under on that. Yeah, the, your lines are pretty good, and, and I th- I think what you're saying is that his ceiling is a little bit more limited than you think it is. That is my – Flowers? That's what Flowers, I, Oh, yeah, yeah no. He, that's what I, I'm worried about. He 100% is. Like, role player for the rest of his career is in the cards, whereas Jason, I think, still has an unproven ceiling. He does, but I, I I was trying to find it, and I unfortunately can't because there was also then a Seahawks report very recently of <laughs> yeah, they want to we're going to get more. back to running the ball. So <laughs> it, it, that, that's where I'm Zay Flowers. Maybe they're both let, just capped. Let them, let them both be run-heavy teams, but Zay Flowers is the number one wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Like did, That is locked in, and JSN, you're hoping that in the second year he gets better. He – should see more opportunities than Tyler Lockett, who it certainly seemed like Lockett had finally did, started to show some signs of decline this past year, even though they brought him back. So it's it's a strange situation because every argument you make for JSN of like, I mean, don't worry about the rookie year. He was drafted to – he was a first-round pick. He was drafted to be great. He's going to improve in year two. Every, all of those arguments – are Zay Flowers' arguments yes. as well. Yes. But he's already the number one, so I'll take him over JSN. Okay. I think that's fair. I think both are very interesting players long term because I think we're going to learn really quickly, like, if both those guys struggle in year two, it's going to be a really hard sell going into year three Yeah, with just the statistical backing of, like, players don't generally break out that late in terms right. of big numbers. Like, but what – and then a, a, just another point for Zay Flowers – not that JSN can't, of course, but last year you at least had a few times throughout the season where you got a spike, where like a huge play happened. Wide receiver three in week 12, wide receiver seven in week 14, wide receiver nine in week 17. Yeah, yeah. so um, those those weeks do exist for Zay Flowers. I, don't, I think it's more of a he's a nice steady floor player than you're always hoping for ceiling, but it does – it will happen a handful of times. Would it surprise you that uh, – he was only about 200 yards over JSN's number last year. Uh, Is that no, about, that, about what that, you would have expected? Yeah, that's what I would J- have expected. JSN didn't have a terrible season. Right. Wasn't JSN like 63 six, for 628 and 4? Yeah. It was just disappointing for what you were expecting. I will say this. If both of them have a mediocre season this year, it, it, for dynasty purposes, if, if Zay Flowers comes out and is mediocre this next year as the one, and JSN comes out and is mediocre as the three. JSN will hold value because D, because Lockett will be. You will feel like he's more blocked right yeah, now, the, the, and the, that he he'll had be, a he had a reason. Yeah. Um. So it, unless you are confident that Flowers is going to have a great season this year, long term, the value still holds on on JSN's side. Uh, I do have a question from Caitlin. She writes in and says, "Should I try to sell Tyreek Hill right now or keep him for oh, one man. more year?" Right, do I mean? Usually, when you have a really, really good wide receiver, uh, it is a great task, a great uh, stra- strategic uh, option to trade them. Like I, we got there, we got there. <laughs> um, felt, felt the panic exasperatedly. <laughs> yeah, that, thank you. You know, I traded Julio Jones for a like rookie CD Lamb plus a first right when Julio was on top and 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 you know turned into nothing the next year and that works great but I do think that Tyree Kill is such a difference maker in total fantasy points versus the field right now this year that I want him on my roster this is the type of player you need to win a championship and so it's how I'm, I treat McCaffrey and Dynasty. exactly like yeah. and and they are outliers they are they are not the you don't prescribe this towards other good veterans you only prescribe holding on to them until the end for the elite of the elites the one or two at the position group uh trevor mike uh sorry trevor would like to know mike sure not trevor mike trevor mike um what is mike's favorite tattoo i mean they see i feel like the whole world they've seen your right arm for like 10 years right yeah. So I mean, I mean, they're both. They're both. Can you swap? Uh, you can't swap the my arms. 
Um, All we gotta do is you guys sit in different spots for. What one about show. a mirror on the back wall that shows Mike's left arm? Maybe get it. Are you hiding? I mean, is it possible? Are you hiding tattoos on that arm? That he you- hates I the tattoos am not. On the, the, the left arm is. Much older. Like, I, I sleeved up my... L- <laughs> Sorry, the tattoos. I, they, I came out left arm first. And then I was stuck for a while. <laughs> the tattoos on my left arm were... That was my first sleeve, so the right is newer. But the but my favorite one is uh, my... my uh, oh, is that a rocket ship? It, <laughs> yes, the space shuttle. Oh, okay. Where... Wait, did you laugh at me? Is the rocket ship the kid way of saying space shuttle? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but it's just where... The a very common traditional like Americana tattoo is the ship. It's like a pirate ship. Okay. And I I think those are very cool, but that's like I'm not a that's not who I am, so I just You're figured a space out. pirate. Yeah, so like, you went with what fits you better. Yeah. The, you went with a rocket ship. There are there are several people who believe Jason has never looked more awake and then also Jason's blood sugar is at a good level right now. So is this the morning recording going on? Are you caffeinated? I've got a coffee right here. Yeah. And he's not burgernated. Have That's we right. seen I, 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 metabolizing <laughs> Jason is not making an appearance? Post lunch recordings are a different they're a whole different thing, man. Well, the good news is, I mean, regular season, five days a week. Yep. Yep. Jason in season I'm in. I'm always morning caffeinated, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, L- a little behind the curtain. Yesterday, um, we try. I mean, we try. Poor, we we don't try. We do, um, we, we, we we occasionally think about, <laughs> think about trying. To, we think about trying. We to eat. consider thinking right. Thank about you. Thank trying you. to eat healthy <laughs> for lunch. Yeah, and uh, we we always uh, we cater lunch for the uh, the crew here, and so it's always a like who wants to go where. Well, yesterday, what was the phrase uh, decided when you said where do we want to. Uh, Eat, and somebody said... It was a Patton Oswalt quote. Avalanche I'll, level... Yeah, of avalanche level of fat. I, something yeah, like it, that. It, yeah, it, Mike asked the question of, like, do we want to go healthy or not? Um, and it was... Tragic avalanche fat. <laughs> so we had burgers, and we had fries. And uh, who, let me ask the deucers over there. Um, who who would you say is the biggest ice cream fan of The Office? Oh, you, 100%. That's going to be Andy Hall. Yeah, and who has the most desserts on a regular basis? It's also Andy. Okay. Hollywood. You or Rob, actually. Yeah, Rob does that, too, but he's in good shape. Um, <laughs> so he, he's allowed. Uh, but but yesterday we ordered burgers and fries. Mm-hmm. And I make a, a, a comment that there's shakes on the menu. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, I better not do that. I want to keep my girlish Smart. figure. Smart. You alerted me to it, though. And what? Lo and behold, we're sitting there. We're just eating our lunches. We're all having a nice time. And who pulls out a shake? <laughs> yeah. But Jason Moore. Oh. Who smuggled the shake into the order it without was, disclosure? It was, Oreo, it was a malt, malt, mm, fantastic, and then drank it with just an evil overlord cackle the whole lunch. He time. was very proud. of I himself. have never tasted a better shake than tasting it with your sadness. It really <laughs> was like a salt in the sweet. I drink your tears, and so it was. It was the best shake of my life, but. What you were what, yeah, the reason where the I was story to, yeah. is coming up is because yesterday we we recorded an episode of the Spitballers, our our comedy show, and uh, we did that <laughs> right after lunch, <laughs> <laughs> and I was he started walking into the studio, and when I say walking, I Waddling. do mean dragging his legs behind him. Yeah. He wa- my, my and I shoes said, were squeaky on the floor, and I said, you know, just desserts, huh? Yeah, it was a great show. So what are you going to do? Yeah, it was pretty good. All right. Um, I think we're going to wrap this thing up. Surprise episode of the show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you tuned in live, most of you will uh, be listening after the fact, either on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. We told you to subscribe. Uh, yeah, sometimes we like bringing, that bell. bringing a little extra. You know, when we notice J- we take Jason's blood sugar in the morning. Yeah. If it hits a certain range, sometimes we go live. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it works. I was like, 90? Come on, fire it up. Let's go. Yeah, so uh, that is it. Make sure you subscribe. We're here year-round, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Until next week, farewell one and all. Continue debating all of these bounce-back players with your friends, and we'll get some answers in the draft soon. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.